My name is David Connolly and today I'd like to give you a brief overview of some of the key highlights of being able to use the hourly energy systems tools that we've developed in the Heat Roadmap Europe project. These tools are provided free of charge from the Heat Roadmap Europe website and I'd like to show you how to get them and what you can do with them or at least some brief examples. So the first thing you need to do is go to the heatroadmap.eu website and when you arrive on the home page you'll notice that one of the first links you reach is something called many useful resources. If you click on that you'll be brought to a page that highlights some of the outputs from the project that we believe are very useful in heat planning activities but you can also navigate to that menu um, on the left hand side and here you'll be given a more refined list of uh, sub menus um, that can outline some of the other ways that you can access these useful resources. So the way that I would like to demonstrate to you today is something we call resources by country and the reason I like this is that it gives you a map but on a country basis um, which allows you to select the individual tools that we've made for that country. So let's use an example from the Heat Roadmap Europe 3, our Stratego project. If we click on Italy, which was one of the countries included in Stratego, you'll see that a pop-up appears on the top right hand side, highlighting the useful resources we have made in the Heat Roadmap Europe project for Italy. And the three things we've made for Italy today to date are something we call the, the country report. So if I click on that, you can see that it opens a document of around 10 pages and this is a summary of the key actions we recommend in the Heat Roadmap Europe project for Italy and it basically outlines our recommendations of how you can decarbonize the Italian heat, heating and cooling sectors over the next 25-30 years. It is of course only a summary and it gives you some of the key outputs such as the heat atlas and some calculations and so on and if you want more detailed calculations you have to go to the actual background reports that came within the Heat Roadmap Europe 3 project. The second useful resource that we have in this map is something we call the interactive map or the heat atlas and if you click on that it brings you to an online version of the heat atlas that we developed in the Heat Roadmap Europe 3 project. I'm not going to discuss this in detail because we have another video that explains the heat atlas functions in more detail and instead I'm going to go back and focus on the third resource that we've provided here which is the hourly model of the energy system. So in order to get your hands on the model you simply click the third link and you can see on the bottom left of my screen it starts a download. And what I want to do is just give you some quick examples of some of the nice um, calculations you can make when you have access to something like an hourly energy systems analysis tool. So the first thing you'll need to do is open your downloads uh, window wherever this zip file is saved to and you can see that the, 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 the model arrives in a one folder um, a zip file. So I right click on that and I extract all and then it will extract the files from the zipped folder uh, including the energy plan model itself. So when I open the folder you can see I get a few different files uh, available with the download and then the most important one for now is this energyplan.exe file. Now we provide in this folder the energy plan software that was available at the time that we completed Heat Roadmap Europe 3 but if you want to make sure you have the most recent version then please go to our website www.energyplan.eu by doing so you'll be brought to our homepage where you can access the most latest version under the download page while I'm on the website, I'd also, also like to point out that there is a lot of useful information on the homepage for Energy Plan also, including a variety of free training material if you want to learn how to use the model in more detail, as well as a forum where you can ask some questions and as other useful resources like costs that we assume for different technologies and some links to different literature that we've published and so on. There's even a members page on our website where you can view people that are actually located in the same country as you so that you can help exchange some information. So if I view into Italy for example you'll see that by clicking on Italy I get access to 229 other people who have registered to use the energy plan model in, in Italy. But going back to the, the main story for today, the energy plan file, if I double click on the model, you can see that it opens up the, the software. 
And of course, it is a, an advanced energy systems analysis tool. So there is a lot of buttons and a lot of settings. But I'd just like to give you a quick run over some of the most important features that I believe will enable you to make some nice calculations without having a very detailed understanding of the tool. So the first thing I want to show you is that on the left hand side, you can see that there's a few different um, uh, expansion options on the menu which give you a more detailed breakdown of the different components within the energy system. So you have demand and supply, balancing and storage, cost, simulation and outputs. So if I want to get all of this information for the Italian energy system I simply go to file and open and then I will go to the energy plan models. It will default by default. It will open the models that I've just downloaded because I've opened this from that folder. And you can see that the five heat roadmap Europe three countries are all included in the model that you've just downloaded. And if we stick with the Italian uh, version of the software, you can see that there's three models provided. One is called the Italian 2010 model, and that is based on historical data from the Italian energy system in the year 2010. Then there's two models that are based on the year 2050. The Italian BAU stands for business as usual, and that reflects how we expect the Italian energy system to develop if it evolves based on current policies. So if we don't implement major new changes compared to what we have today. And the second scenario we have is the Italian heat roadmap scenario. And this is a copy of the final strategy that we propose in the heat roadmap Europe study for Italy, which outlines how Italy can decarbonize its heating and cooling sector. I'm just going to open the Italian 2050 business as usual model. And you can see when I do that, a lot of the data um, becomes populated. So this basically imports all of the numbers for the Italian business as usual 2050 energy model. So if I click on demand and electricity demand, you can see that in 2050, our model suggests that Italy will have an electricity demand of approximately 406, 407 terawatt hours per year. You can also navigate through a lot of the different other different uh, menus. So, for example, the total heat demand will be 392 terawatt hours per year. And then in the transport sector, we have various demands for jet fuel, diesel, petrol and so on. On the supply side, then we'll have different technologies that meet these demands. But let's start by just doing something simple and showing you how an energy systems analysis tool like this can actually give you some very interesting numbers. Uh, very quickly. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to look at the results and one of the most easy ways to look at results is by pressing the run screen option because that just simply creates a pop-up that provides some very useful numbers very quickly. The first very interesting number we've got here is the total CO2 emissions in Italy in the year 2010 or, or sorry 2050 which comes back at 467 million tons. I can also see that the fuel consumption in the year 2050 is expected to be 2,157 terawatt hours for the total energy system. So that's for electricity, heating, industry, transport and so on. And if I scroll down a bit further, I can see that the total cost each year of operating the Italian energy system is 334 billion euro. So that's uh, there's some of the key numbers that you can get very quickly from the model. And these costs include investments, um, fuel, CO2, operation, maintenance and so on. So it's the total costs each year of maintaining the, uh, the, the energy system, uh, of running the energy system. So let's just do something very simple. If we say we're going to increase the electricity demand from 406 to 450 terawatt hours, then we can just run the results again. And what we can see here is that the CO2 emissions have gone up to 486. So originally that was 467. So naturally, because we've had an increase in electricity demand, we've also had an increase in CO2 emissions. The fuel consumption has also increased from 2,157 up to 2,233. So we've had almost a 100 terawatt hour increase in fuel consumption because of that 50 terawatt hour increase in electricity demand. I can also see that the total annual costs have increased to 338 
billion euro. So a 4 billion euro increase due to the fact that we've increased the electricity demand. So straight away, what Energy Plan can offer you is a way to quantify what is the impact of changing the demands, like I've just demonstrated with the electricity demand. So you can quantify that impact in terms of how it affects CO2, how it affects uh, fuel consumption, and how it affects my costs. I'm obviously picking a lot of the high level results. There's a lot more details within the model, but this is just to give you some examples of the type of figures you can you can get back from the tool. We can do the same thing for heating. So if we wanted, we could increase this uh, heat demand and see what the f effect is. And we could do the same thing for transport by just increasing the demands there also. But now let's look at the supply to get some examples of what you can do on the supply side. So if we go to the electricity only section, we can see that we have a lot of different renewable energy resources providing electricity um, on the Italian energy system. So let's do a, a, a quick um, test here to see what would happen if we removed these renewable energy resources. So if I run the, the screen just to refresh our memory, I can see that the CO2 emissions are now 486 um, million tons of CO2 and the fuel consumption is 2,233. And going down, we have the total annual costs of 300 and 38 billion euro. So let's delete our renewable energy technologies and let's see how that would affect if we didn't have these renewables in the Italian energy system in the year 2050, how would that affect our energy system? And what we can see is the carbon emissions now have increased quite substantially. So they're gone up to 530 million tons of CO2. The fuel consumption is gone up also to 2,300 terawatt hours of um, energy and the total annual costs have also increased to 340 billion euro per year. So you can see that by removing these renewables, we've made the system less efficient, more costly and producing more CO2 emissions. But let's say I wanted to then, of course, you can manually put in a lot of these renewables back in, just like I did, and you can test a lot of other different capacities if you'd like to. But rather than just put it back in manually, what I'd like to answer is, well, what would be the cheapest amount of wind power that we should have on the Italian electricity system? So what we can do if we want to find out what the cheapest amount of wind power is, is we can get the model to vary the amount of wind power, calculate the cost, and show us what the cost is for different capacities. And the way that we do that is we go to the output window and then we go to overview and we have what we call the serial calculator. So if I turn that on and then I define it for the first renewable input and what we mean by the first renewable input is if I go back to the electricity only window, you can see that these the wind is the first renewable input and there the remaining or the other six inputs so I go back to my overview window. So I have the serial calculator on. I have the, defined the uh, input as the first renewable input. And I'm going to increase that in levels of 5,000, well, let's say 10,000 megawatts. So I'm going to tell Energy Plan that for every step along the way, I want it to calculate the impact for different wind power capacities increasing in levels of 10,000 megawatts. I can put any number I want in here, but I'm just doing this systematically so we can see what is the cheapest amount of wind power now that we don't have any other renewables on the system. So if I go then to define the output, what I'm telling Energy Plan here is that for each of these inputs, what do I want it to calculate? And I tell it that I want it to calculate the total cost of my system. So that means when I press the run button now, because I have the serial calculator on, what the model will do is calculate the total costs for each of these wind power capacities. So I press the run screen and you can see that the model now begins calculating these costs for each of those inputs. When it gets to the final input, a pop-up window is displayed, which displays what is the total cost for each of those inputs that I just um, made. And you can see that the cheapest one occurs here, which is 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So at 50,000 megawatts of wind power, I get the cheapest wind, wind capacity 
for Italy. So if I then go back to my model, I turn off the serial calculator, I go to electricity only, and I put in 50,000 megawatts of wind power, and then I run the serial calculator, I can see that this is the impact of having the cheapest wind power on my system. So when I do that, I get a carbon emission of 498 um, million tons. I get a fuel consumption of 2,258 terawatt hours, and I get a total annual cost of 338 billion. Now the very interesting thing about this is if you go back to the start of this video you'll notice that this is actually more expensive than what I had originally when I had wind, PV and river hydro installed in the system. So by going with wind only I've actually caused the system to be more expensive, less efficient and create more CO2 than what I had when I had a mix of wind, PV and river hydro. So you can do interesting studies like this, change the supply capacities, change the demand capacities and see what impact it has on your energy system. The good news is that not only do you get these let's say simple results that come in the screen that I'm pressing here now but if you want to you can go to what we call the tab screen and here you can increase the output so that for you can turn on show hourly values and that way you can actually look at the results on an hourly basis from the start of the year in terms of hour one to the end of the year which is hour 8784. If I change these settings to show each hourly value now when I run the screen it's not only the simple or let's say the, the accumulated results over the year that I get at the top but I actually get how the energy system is performing for each hour of the year uh, um, in terms of the demands required and the supply technologies that are meeting them. So there's a lot of information available if you want to go into the details of how the energy system is performing. Ver another very nice feature is that instead of run running on the screen, you can also run to the clipboard, which means you can open Microsoft Excel and copy the results into an Excel spreadsheet for a more detailed analysis. Um, of what you've got. So here you get to see the same results that I've been looking at, the CO2 emissions, the fuel consumption, and the total annual, annual energy system costs for each hour of the year like we had specified in the settings. Similarly, the final thing that I'll show you that you can do is that if you don't want to run it, these very detailed calculations that you're getting in the screen and on the clipboard, you can also run the print view. And what that say, does is it prints a very short two-page summary of how the energy system is performing. So if I put this in my downloads page and call it Italy Business as Usual 2050, and you can print this to any PDF or XPS viewer, so if I save that and I go to my downloads, you can see that I now have a very nice two-page overview of how the Italian energy system looks in the year 2050, which tells me things like what was the electricity demand, what was the district heating demand, what was the wind power capacity, the wind production, what was the different uh, production of district heating, what was the different electricity consumption and production details, and down at the bottom a very nice fuel balance in terms of the different plants and the different fuels that they consumed, along with the total fuel consumption here on the right hand side that the energy system has. So I can see the total coal, the total oil, the total gas, the total biomass, the total renewables, and then finally the total energy consumption. On the next sheet, I get a more detailed breakdown of my costs, and I get a more detailed breakdown of the hourly gas balance um, uh, on the energy system. So there is a lot of information. As I said, if you go to the Energy Plan website, you'll find on our homepage a lot of training material. And the main thing I want to highlight for those who are interested in the Heat Roadmap Europe work is that by selecting any of the countries that were involved in Heat Roadmap Europe 3, which were Croatia, Czech Republic, Italy, Romania, and the United Kingdom, you have access to a fully developed hourly energy system model, thanks to the work that we're doing in the Heat Roadmap Europe project. 
Thank you very much for listening. I hope these tools are useful for your energy planning work. And uh, please keep follow the heatroadmapeurope.eu website for more news in the future. You can sign up to our newsletter. You can follow us on Twitter or you can follow our YouTube channel. Thank you very much for listening um, and I hope you get something useful from this video. See you.